Oh, I'll show you. Go for it. I'll show you. Sure. I'd entered a wood panelled foyer with a lift on my left and an old wooden staircase winding up to the upper floors. In front of me was a windowless corridor that stretched off into the distance. So, from what I can work out, trucks used to come from farms and they would bring the trucks up to the loading docks here and they would bring, different farms would bring their wool supplies in. They would sort them out and store them on different levels of the building. Yeah. And right up the top... Um, is where the best light is, but that's where they used to do all the wall classing. Farrah, it's just this such a massive building. It's enormous, isn't it? We walk down the corridor in front of us. The ground floor is being used for storage. Cars, furniture and white goods are hidden behind chicken wire on both sides. There's no windows and only fluorescent lights to light your way. Even though the corridor is over 100 metres long, it's a little claustrophobic. It feels like a coal mine in here. It's so sort of enclosed and there's no, there's almost no natural light. My understanding is that the building really didn't have any tenants above the bottom floor um, for the last probably 20 years or so. Okay. Mm. So how many people are in here at the moment? There is new tenants moving in at the moment. I think to my counting there's probably, there's between 15 and 20 tenants in here that are art tenants. So we're going up a very old staircase, and if you look above, it goes a long way up. Due to its age as well, um, over a period of time, people have vandalised it. When we moved in here, uh, there were squatters living in here. Okay. So they would come in and just smash windows, and which you can see on this floor. Oh, my goodness. At the top of the staircase was one of the biggest rooms I've ever seen. I was a little lost for words. Um, I can't believe there's no... There's no use for it. It's just... This, I mean, what, what we're standing in here is... It, it's, it looks like it's about as big as a football field. Um, there's sort of pillars uh, every three or four metres in between um, holding up the next floor. But it's just empty. Pigeon. So you can see on the floor here where they have the numbers. Yes. You can imagine my surprise when I came here the first time, and I was with a very, very nice real estate agent, actually, and he said, oh, come and look at this building. It's and a real fixer-upper. <laughs> because I, the description I had given him is, I need somewhere where I'm not going to get in trouble for accidentally spilling paint, um, that has a lot of room so that there's good ventilation, that's cheap. Um, you know, I don't mind a bit of mess, that sort of thing. So he brought me in here, and all I could think of was, imagine how many artists you could have in here. You know, it's well, hundreds. every every artist in Newcastle could be in this building. Exactly. It's... So how long have you been here? I've been here for about maybe two and a half years. Um, I was in here by myself for a long time, which is pretty scary because it's such a big old building. Yeah. Okay, so we're going up to the fourth floor now. We always save the best part for last. Of course. Oh my goodness. So this is a massive fourth floor that you haven't got the pillars here that you did on the other ones. And it's got natural light coming in through louvered windows up above. So this is the, you know, obviously the special spot. This is where we like to bring people to really impress them. <laughs> um, you know, I, I spend every day here, but I come upstairs and still think, look at, look at this place. It's just a, it's a monolith really. Yeah. And it's sitting in the middle of the city and it's funny how a building of this size can be I don't I used to live around the corner from here I never noticed this building really you walk past it and you don't even think what's inside that and the amount of people we bring in here that are just blown away by it the amount of natural light you've got coming in it must just look different in every it day is of the week such beautiful light in here we always toy around with this idea of um, setting up our own art gallery in here because you couldn't you just couldn't get more perfect light for lighting art uh, during the day and even at this time in the afternoon which is quite late you can see how much how much is still in here and the light in here is very even and and this is why um, interestingly art spaces become places where people get very um, they don't like to let a, not, a lot of people know about it because it's sort of you know oh I've got a space in here and I don't want anyone else to have one because there's not enough room. Well, in this building, I believe there is enough room for everybody, and then some. It also is an unusual space in the sense that 
particularly people uh, like Trevor, who's now setting up his master's exhibition. The art's in a lot of ways driven by the space, and if when you speak to Trevor, you'll also find that it's changed the way he's looked at his art practice. Everybody I know that is working in this building at present has been heavily influenced by this building.